Right, so I'm gonna go through quickly a little bit about what different things do here uh, as the setup part, kinda. Uh, and I know it might not be too interesting for you guys, perhaps, but um, I want to have it kinda on video. And I guess then you can ask me questions at least, you know. Uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna post a uh, picture in how do cars work that is just a graph so in discord hey old sabrex how you doing the insides of the chicanes send you upwards the outside sends me into walls yes but that's a, that's the thing depending on what wheel it hits it sends you up or it sends you somewhere else so basically this is the setup screen in a set of corsa you guys know this mainly yeah, lifting uh, is uh, helpful at times, because if you lift at the wrong time, you're going to gain grip on the front end and turn around. You good? Nice. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I took my uh, my third vaccine today, actually, so we're not that very quick in Sweden. So arm is kind of a little bit like sore to some extent, but uh, it's, it's all right. And I'm not too tired yet, so <laughs> uh, that's hopefully all right. Oh, nice. Uh I think it's very like in Sweden, it's like very people that have, have done it at the same time, basically. So if we click set, set up, you guys know this, uh, but basically there are three presets. If you click them, it's going to load that setup. So the aggressive preset is normally what I use for dry. Safe, I never use because it is done in a weird way normally. It is not really that safe. It's just slow and bad, but it does overall make you spin less and so on because there's no grip in the front end for instance and then there's a wet preset which is basically more reasonable than the safe preset preset but also on wet tires no worries Abrex. um what time did you get it 15 35 i think are you looking for excuses for the bad driving that is to come yes of course there's always bad driving out here uh Right, so current setup is whatever we have loaded. So normally it is some kind of like the safe preset or, preset or something. But uh, yeah, so click here if you want to go in and alter what you have. So this is the one that I'm I currently have. So these are the different tabs with setups that we uh, set up. Well, changes that we can make, and I'm gonna go through them quite quickly. Load save down here. Loads the different setups, and this is available in a folder in uh, documents and everything you can find that on if you google for it i also have that in some information i think but basically if you want to load a, a setup that you already have you click there so it will be basically as loading these but we load the uh, the setups that we made ourselves from here so i'm gonna load this one and now to go in and fix that I'm, i click here you got to 10 a.m nice yeah so then you then you're fast Right, so now we have a setup, and it can be any setup. Uh, they will all look the same in terms of what you can change. On GT4 cars, some changes cannot be made. So pressures in the dry, we want to be at 27.64. That is the optimum. And that is, of course, very accurate, and you can't even see that. You can only see point, well, like uh, tenths of, of PSI. And PSI is a weird unit, but that, ha that is how it is. And basically, if the track gets two degrees warmer which it is now so uh, my setup is made for track 24 now it's track 26 for every two degrees of a difference the rule of thumb is one psi change uh, 0.1 psi change so two degrees warmer now we go down by 0.1 do you have an advice for me i got a great setup i think created myself a brand set only the tires are really reaching high temps and high psi after like 50 minutes what do i do nice that is a problem and there's a bunch of problems that we can have. Uh, but I guess it might be that you perhaps have, uh, like, the brakes are heating up the tires. But it can also be that you have uh, way too aggressive angles. Um, so I'm going to kind of come to that, I think, a little bit. But it depends on the setup and the, and the track and everything. Brands Hatch is kind of a mess, and Alton Park is a little bit the same, so it's going to be interesting, I think. But basically, the main thing that we're going to come to here, when we have the right pressures, we can drive the car and see how it feels. But basically, there are two things that we're going to work with in the tires to create, basically, uh, the grip that we want. Uh, we're going to look at angles, 
so camber, tow, stuff like that, how much we steer. And we're going to look at how the vertical load affects the available grip that we have. So if you're in my Discord, if you go to how do cars work, I've put a graph in there. And on the bottom part, you see that there's a load. So this way, load. And when you increase the load, you get more grip, but not it doesn't it's not linear. So if you increase by 10% on the outside tire, because we're going to a corner now, you put more load on the outside tire, but then you put the same amount less on the inside. And since the curve is like this, so one side is going to go up and one side is going to go down the loads and the average is going to be below the curve because the curve goes like this. Is it is it a possibility to lower the wheel rate on front wheels to lower the temps or PSI? Uh, temps is uh, how much energy you put into the tires, basically. So uh, basically, we're going to end up, I think, <laughs> yes, it, but it's tricky. But anyway, so the amount of grip that you have, you know, we put aerodynamics on the car, downforce to increase the load we have vertically on the tires. But that works if it's on the same side. But when we go through a corner, we increase the weight on the outside, but decrease it on the inside. So the thing is that tires don't gain too much grip when you put more load into it. So when it comes to springs, and this is one of the most important things, if we increase the wheel rate, the spring is going to get stiffer and it's going to be easier for us to overload the tire. And that will reduce the grip. So grip is always better if everything is softer and springs is just how much we compress the wheel, basically. Uh, dampers is how quickly we compress the wheel. Um, so if you have too much front and grip, you might want to increase the wheel rate or you might want to stiffen up the dampers. That is the overall part. So we are talking about angles, caster, uh, camber and stuff like that, and also about stiff, well, Stiffnesses. Um, so the the problem there, Sabrex, is that there's a prob there's a lot of things that affect how much heat you get into the tires. So you should lower the front rate for low grip under braking. No. Now this is the tricky part because the springs also helps the car to not like uh, go too low and so on. But basically the combination of anti-roll bar and wheel rate, because the anti-roll bar is basically a spring connecting the two tires. So when you brake and then you try to steer in, if you have too much anti-roll bar and too little wheel rate, you're gonna have no steering. So everything is connected. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go through them just like this quite quickly. Uh, so for having balance in the car, front end, back end, how it steers, we want to have a uh, grip in the front end and grip in the rear end. And if we want more in the front end, or if you get, if you have more in the front end, it's going to be more oversteering and vice versa. Camber is basically the main balancing act we have to do. More camber, so more negative camber means more grip on the front end. You'll have to listen for a while. Yes, I'm sorry, Corsage, but this is basically how it will be the stream a little bit. Uh, it won't be too long, I think, and then we'll get into the car and drive. Uh, but I want to do this because it is something that I've been trying to do for a long time. It might be that I do a second version of it. But camber, so that is how much, so negative is always inward. Positive would be outwards and no one uses it because it's stupid, it doesn't work. It's, it's just bad. So it's always a negative camber. More camber means more negative camber inwards. And what does this mean then? Well, when you tilt a tire, it goes that way. But we tilt this tire and it goes that way. So there sh they should be, you know, the same. But when we go through a corner, we're going to favor the outside tire. So that tire is going to help us go that way. And that is why more camber means more grip. We basically, well, the car turns in more, basically. And the camber on the rear end uh, turns the back end in. So overall, if you just increase camber front and rear, you're going to have more grip overall. But we cannot have too much camber, which this is now maxed, which is not ideal. This is from before the last update, which makes tires uh, overload so this can be a problem sabrex that you have too much camber on the front end so we want to balance this so we don't have too much uh, but you can see that there's less on the rear end than the front end and that's because we need the front end to be a bit better 
to get through the corners. You know, we want to steer, and that means that we have to be able to have more grip on the front end to get around the corner. Caster is how the steering points backwards. You know, in, in these uh, American chopper bikes, like the, the steering axis tilts very much backwards. And what happens then is that the, the front wheels basically lean instead of steer. So then the caster, if we have more caster, we have more camber when we steer a lot. So basically increasing this means basically more camber when you steer a lot in slow corners and so on. It also gives more steering force feedback. And that's because how the geometrics geometry in this front suspension is laid out and that's a problem that we're not we're not going to go through today because it's going to be a problem so how do i know i found the sweet spot with camber basically not too much but there should be a balance between the front and the rear and i'm going to talk about how the feeling uh, works there as well because basically too much front end camber will make the car feel like it's auto steering into the corner but if you have way might or like a lot of camber on the back end it might that might balance it out so maybe basically what you can do uh, if you go to the tires where are we here it's going to show if you have a lot of wear on, on the outside mid part and the inside so if you have excessive wear on the inside there's probably too much camber because then you know the inside with will, will contact the, the, the road and that will wear faster so if you have a big distribution of wear here on, on each four tires, that's going to show you maybe that you have uh, too much camber. And that's also the thing. If you lean the tires a lot, now, you know, the contact patch becomes very narrow. So if you have too much camber, then longitudinal grip goes away. So accelerating and braking. So if you have too much camber, braking will be affected badly. So there's a trade-off in many ways. Uh, braking and accelerating is one of them. Uh, on the rear end, obviously, then we want grip. So if you have the tire sitting like that, they, they won't contact the ground. And then we have toe. And toe is just a little bit how you pre-point the, the tires. Uh, basically, toe in on the back end means that we have a little bit more stability. Toe out on the front end means a little bit more stability. And it's just because when we go through a corner, we lean on one tire again. If we point the front end in a little bit more we get a little bit more steering but this is only 0.1 of a degree so when you steer into a corner by like 10 degrees or something this isn't gonna affect uh the overall feeling too much so or the overall grip and toe is indeed broken in this game at the moment i'll just talk about that so the ideal way to have toe currently is like this uh and it doesn't make sense but we can we can go away from that right now. There's going to be an update from uh, from uh, Kunos apparently. But basically, what you need to know is that uh, toe out on the front end, so negative. This is toe in, so negative toe in is toe out. Toe out on the front end is stable. Toe in on the rear end is stable, and it doesn't affect grip so much as you think. Um, but it does affect how how quick the car steers in. It is kind of broken. Uh, basically, the thing is that this isn't an absolute value. Value. It doesn't actually tell you how much toe in or toe out you have. It's just a, there's a reference point, and that reference is off, and they're going to adjust the reference point. So don't worry too much about it, basically. All right, so we've covered pressures. They should be at 27.6 is optimum, and around like Silverstone, they're going to be like up to 27.9 uh, when when you put load on that side, and there's going to be it's going to be down to like 27.3. So you can never be exact around the entire lap, but 27.6 is what you're aiming for with dry tires, and that affects well the track temp affects that. Uh, wet tires you want to be at 30 psi uh, within a, a one psi basically plus minus one right electronics uh, traction control it limits how much you spin on throttle it doesn't catch slides for you so more of this just means that you you spin up the, the rear tires less when you go on the throttle but it also makes it slower abs uh, cuts out how much you brake so you don't lock up when you brake uh, i never touch these i use the standard aggressive values and then i i don't touch them ecu map means that you can have like a different throttle response in some cars you can't have the the one because it's like super sharp and it doesn't work but i also just go with the aggressive um, setup thingy telemetry laps if you do this 
there's going to be a file with um, telemetry data that you can later on use with Motec. Uh, it creates a bunch of data every time you go out with the car, so leave it at zero unless you're specifically going out for, for that. This, I never have a look at, basically. But it obviously tells you that if it's very wet, you may need more TC, and that kind of makes sense, more traction control. Right, fuel and strategy. Here, there's going to be tire data that we can have a look at. Front left, front right, rear left, rear right. Uh, how much fuel you put in the car when you go out, what tire you're on, dry or wet. And on this particular server, you currently don't pick um, your, uh, your tire set, but that's just going to be a number, so you have a bunch of tire sets. Um, then we have, front, we have brakes, front and rear. One brakes last for like is it 45 minutes to two hours roughly. Basically, if you're not doing long races, you use one brakes. Two brakes last for 12 hours. Three brakes last for 16 hours. Four brakes are qualifying brakes. Uh, you're gonna kill them within 45 minutes, definitely. Uh, and the the, lo the longer they last for, they the worse they break. If you're going in into slow corners you're basically on ABS all the time, and then brakes doesn't affect the performance. But in high speeds, like re like if you come at 250, there's going to be a difference between one brakes and two brakes, because one brakes bite harder, and the tire there's so much energy in the tire that you're not reaching ABS directly, and that's going to lower your braking distance in high speed corners. So that, that means that in some corners, the really fast ones, uh, your brake point will be altered a little bit, but in the slow corners, you won't notice the difference. Yes, so college setups better have br four brake pads, but the thing is that I often forget to change from this, which means that fuck the four brakes, like don't touch them, basically. Go into one brakes because they, they work for most races, that unless it's a specific long run race. If you forget to go from four brakes to one brakes, you're gonna die. It's not worth it. Don't touch the four brakes. They're, they're, they're not that good, basically. Here you can set some pit stop strategies. So it's just like the first pit stop, second pit stop, third pit stop. So you set in the first pit stop, I want to add these many liters or not. Uh, what tires should I go to and what pressures should there be in those uh, tires? So you can have different pressures for different pit stops. I have experienced death with four brakes, not fun. I have experienced death with one brakes, not fun either. Um, oh yeah, that make that makes sense, Archer. Two brakes have wider temp window than one. Oh, that makes sense. The more the sh more short uh, shorter lived and higher bite they are, the more in the right uh, temperature they have to be. So you know, like Formula One brakes are amazing but they have to be like 600 degrees to actually do anything at all. Whereas road brakes have to work when it's rainy and like one degree or something outside. Uh, what you need to do, know is that if you have to come into the pits, uh, because you hit a wall, you, you've ruined your tires, there's a very healthy thing to do before, just when you create a setup, make sure that you're pressed. As soon as you've changed these pressures, press the use current pressures, and that's gonna update Okay, so my pressure's around 26.8 all tires. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, that means that for the first pit stop, it's going to update these pressures to be the same as you currently have. So same here. That's a good thing to do. And basically, if you start to change here, at second pit stop, they're going to change the brakes if you decide to change the brakes. That takes a long time. Don't do that. Um, so that's it for that. Uh, then we come to the mechanical grip section. And... Uh, this is a little bit tricky. Let's start with the steer ratio. That means that if I turn ten, uh, if I turn twelve degrees on my steering wheel, I'm gonna turn one degree on the tires. Higher number means I need to steer more uh, on the steering wheel to get the same on the on the road, basically. Unless you have to. Yeah, exactly. Unless you have to, because change like if you do a twenty-four hour race, you need to go from uh, three brakes to two brakes because there are no brakes that last for 24 hours. You have to make a brake uh, change. Uh, the steer ratio, I always keep the same as the aggressive preset, because this is going to change how the car works completely. Don't do it, basically. Uh, brake bias, the Bentley, 
uh, always comes with quite a high uh, brake balance um, because of how the car is made and so on. It always likes a little bit less. Okay, so that's the session ended. So now we have, we're back at the, another, uh, just a new session here. So round 62 is good for Bentley. It means, well, it's just how much brake you have on the front and the rear end. If you have too much on the rear end, you're gonna treat the car is gonna be treating like you have a handbrake on the rear end. It's gonna spin around. It's not as bad as you might think, um, but it does affect the load back front to rear and how much you can trail brake into corners. This is something that you have to elaborate a little bit with. Most cars using the standard aggressive setting is good. Yes, Kranka, exactly. So. Uh, obviously, if, you, if you're lazy and don't want to steer too much, go to a low setting because then you don't have to steer so much to get the front end to steer anywhere. If you go here, you have to steer a lot to get somewhere, but yes, it means you have more pre precision. But it also, most of the, the most of the thing you, well, if you go here, it feels like you have more grip, but you don't. Yeah, exactly. But you usually want to get used to one ratio, then stick to it. But around... Basically, the standard aggressive setups are roughly in the area you want to be. Unless you are at Monaco, yes, and we're not at Monaco in this race. <laughs> exactly. Oh, in this uh, game, sorry. Brake power, always keep at 100%. Uh, that is just for if your brake pedal, actually, if you can't reach, like, well, like, if you... How much does it go to 80 to, 80 to 100? So if you, like, the... When, when would you use that? So if you brake 100% at your pedal, if you only weigh, want 80% brake power in the car, that's what you do. Keep it at 100. Yet, exactly. I, I hope they put the notch life in first. Uh, let's skip anti-roll bars here for the minute. Uh, wheel rate, that is just the stiffness of the spring. Maserati in the wet, yeah, but that's just a hack because you can't control your, your right foot king. Or your left foot, sorry. Uh... <laughs> That indeed makes sense. So this will limit how much you can break mechanically. You cannot, if you go here, you cannot physically break full power, which helps in the Maserati because it doesn't have ABS. Uh, spring stiffness means then how how stiff the how much force it takes to push the wheel up into the car basically. So when we steer, the outside tire are gonna go up in the car and the inside tires are gonna go down. Uh, a stiffer spring means uh, you overload the tire quicker. But it also means a more direct car. Basically, the feeling of the wheel rate is kind of weird. But if it feels like kind of jumpy, you have quite a high wheel rate. But if it feels very soft but kind of diffuse, you might have a too low wheel rate. If something feels inherently weird with the car, if it behaves weirdly, if something is like, it's not comfortable, but like everything is kind of right, the balance is good, change the wheel rate. If it's jumpy, skippish, skittish, it's too high. If it's undefined and kind of fuzzy feeling, then the wheel rate might be too low. And then you have to balance that with the anti-roll bars. The anti-roll bars are basically springs connecting each side. So a higher number here will mean that you overload the outside tires more, which means less grip. But it also means a more direct feel. So increasing anti-roll bar a little bit will feel like a, a toe-in change, for instance. So it makes it more direct, less sway in roll control, uh, but it also limits the amount of grip that you have. And that you have to limit back and forth. So when you feel like the camber is good front to rear, like the overall grip, and you want to, like, if you want to back end to skid around the corner a little bit, as many CDA setups, so Coach Dave Academy setups do, for instance, they normally have quite a bit higher anti-roll bar on the rear end. The safe setups normally have quite a bit of anti-roll bar on the front end, because it kind of puts a limiter on how much grip you have. Uh, what can happen is, if you have a really high wheel rate and a low anti-roll bar, when you break, so on the front end, when you break, it might be that the car yeets itself into the corner. And that's because it loads the tire up in a weird way and you just spring yeets it into the corner, kind of. Uh, increased, in that case, increase the end roll bar on the front end a little bit and take down the spring rate a little bit. Or you have to balance that because when you change that again, now the car might feel fussy and diffuse a little bit again, you know. Everything 
is connected. And if you have that feeling of you go into it, you're going to break into a corner and then you're going to steer. And if it's like the wheel just goes light and it doesn't do anything. And I think that this Corsair is where you had issues. It might be that this is way too low and this is way too high. Because then when you break, like the anti roll bar just like knocks out the load transfer, like the, how the grip transfers into the, into the tires. That is my feeling that I've received in the game. Now we have the bump stops. Bump stops are basically a secondary spring, but a very short and a very stiff one. So when the wheel goes up into the wheel well, there's going to be a bump stop that puts a lot of force onto the tire. And you can actually see the lines here. So if I change the spring rate, you're going to see the yellow line move up and down. If I change the, the bump stop rate, it doesn't show. Nice. But if I change this, you can see. This is going to be the ride height, I'm quite sure. Uh, so basically the bump stop is, you know, we, we talked about overloading the tires. If you feel like into, for instance, into Cops corner on Silverstone. So the first corner, if the car, you need the front end to not have too much grip there to, to rotate the car around, try upping the bump stop rate a little bit. So this is just a, a secondary spring rate that you don't touch normally. Well, on the front end you do and on the rear end you don't. This distance, the range, is how close you are to hitting that secondary spring. So having it here means that it, you're already sitting at the bump stop directly. Here it means that you have to roll a little bit for the bump stop to, to actually touch. And then the stiffer it gets, the more limited you're going to be in the, in the grip as well. So in the same way as the lim this anti-roll bar limits the grip on the, the axle across the car, the bump stop limits each wheel. And so having these at 55 means that we'll never touch them. So the rear bump stop rates doesn't matter here in this setup. I never use them, use them. And in most aggressive presets, CDA setups and so on, they're not used very much. Is that the video uh, with um, that Brart sent me before? Because that was hilarious. Hey, buyer. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, and the last thing here, so it's basically the same front and rear, you know, anti-roll bar and spring stiffness. But if we want more grip on the front end, some more rotation, we make uh, things softer here. And again, if we want the car to be more oversteery, so less grip on the rear end, we make this st stiffer. And there's the balancing act back and forth. It's not, but I wanted to send you that too. Yeah, nice. That was funny. Then we have the preload of the differential and it's basically the this governs how much um, different the, the rear axle, so we have rear wheel drive, how much difference we can have in rotation speed uh, on the back end. And if you have a high value out of slow corners, it means, hello Gecko, hope you're doing all right. If you have a high value here, it means that you're going to spin up both. Like if one tire loses grip, the other one is going to be pulled along and lose grip as well. So when, when you lose grip, you lose all of the grip. If you go down here, it means that only... So the, the grip, the, the rotation, the torque, I should say, always goes to the tire with the lesser amount of grip. So out from a slow corner, it means that the outside tire is just going to spin. And the inside tire is just going to sit there and don't do anything. So if your car feels sluggish out of slow corners and you have some rear end grip, try increasing this diff because it's going to mean that more torque is sent to the inside tire and that takes a shorter route, which means that you're going to go quicker out of the corner. So less here means more grip, uh, more means a more agile car coming out of the corners. I wish that the diff could be changed from cockpit during races. Can it not? You might not be able to, like, you might not be able to, I'm not sure. In Formula 1, you can. Please, te please teach me, Mr. Green. Uh, sure, Gecko. We've gone through most of it already. Not, not most of it. But we're going to get into the car soon. Another thing with the diff is that in high-speed corners, you know, the Bentley, for instance, as I drive, in some fast corners, like Blanchemont, for instance, at Spa, the back end can just go around. Uh, it does a King or a Bentley, you know. King is very familiar with this. Going higher here means that it is more stable through fast corners in high speed. 
but it also means that you cannot go around some corners. So if you want to be able to go around Blanche more faster, you might have to go down a little bit here. But most of you guys are going to run with the, the preload, or the differential preload quite low, I think. What the fuck is a car? No one knows. In GTS, no. Okay. In GTS, no. All right. uh, I haven't tried. So this is the mechanical grip. So overall, stiffer means less grip. But they can be weird things like the spring spring rate towards the anti-roll bar. So wheel rate and spring rate is basically the same thing. But the wheel rate, then you measure at the wheel. Spring rate means you measure at the spring. It's just like nomenclature. Don't, don't worry about it. And now we come to the dampers. And those are quite tricky. And they're really tricky to understand how to to get right unless you know what a damper is very well and how it feels when you change them but keep in mind again stiffer means less grip uh, overall because a small difference in how the wheel goes up and down is going to limit the amount of grip you have and a damper works in the way that it produces force uh, you're off with a hair I know what a damper is <laughs> nice what it is yes you can see you, you have seen one uh so a damper produces force w given the speed that it uh, goes uh, like comes together or is pulled apart with so when it sits still it doesn't produce any force but when the wheel goes up and down the faster it moves the more force the damper is going to produce and then there's also some some different ranges so bump means when the damper gets shorter so the wheel goes up into the car and Rebound means when the wheel is coming down again towards the ground. And then there's bump and there's fast bump and rebound and fast rebound. And that just means that there are two, like, there is a, uh, there are two ranges of both motions. So when it compresses slowly and when it compresses quickly. And when it rebounds slowly and when it rebounds quickly. So let's say we are coming into a quarter. We, we stamp on the brakes and we have too much grip, the car spins itself around. Well, then we might be able, we might have to go up a little bit on the bump because then again, we're gonna make it stiffer when it compresses and when the car breaks, it's gonna sit down, it's gonna sit down and the bumper, uh, the damper is gonna compress and the stiffer this one is then, the higher number here, the more force it's gonna produce and the more we're gonna saturate the tires. So, Where's the difference between bump and fast bump then? Well, you can actually increase the fast bump a little bit in that section as well. But fast bump is more related to when the wheel compresses because it goes over a curb or uh, irregularities, stuff like that. And also like the small fast motions. So for instance, coming out of a slow corner traction, we want to, to keep the tires on the ground and it might help then to soften up the dampers on the inside to keep you know when you're going through like a left hand uh say sorry a right hander let's take um club at silverstone coming out onto the hamilton straight which is the formula one straight at silverstone there's always a little bit tricky to keep the rear end uh to keep the grip on the rear end in that situation rebound isn't gonna be uh, affecting the tire too much because they're not so large motions but the small vibrations of the inside right rear tire might be it might be worth it to go down a little bit here to make the tire be able to go down and contact the tire uh, the, the road better so the rebound controls so like if we have way too stiff way too stiff setting here and we go over like if we if you do like this it's going to take a while for the tire to come down and, and touch the tarmac. Which means that in the same way as when we're breaking into a corner, you know, the front end compresses, but the rear end also rises. So if we need more grip on the rear end when we're going through onto the brakes, we might want to go down a little bit on the rebound to make the tires drop faster and contact the, the road. Now, there's been a lot of words here, but there are basically four set uh, four settings, you know. And these are kind of the same, but just in different intervals. And these are kind of the same, but in different intervals. And then it's the opposite for the front and rear. So, you know, if we want more grip on the front end, make this softer. But we can also make this stiffer. And there's going to be a balance. Now, the tricky part is that 
if you have a stiffer spring so that the the tire like the like the spring pushes the the wheel faster down if we go here then we might have to adjust the dampers to correlate for that and that is the tricky part again we when we change something we need to change something else But can you really feel all those things happening while driving to make these decisions? I feel like I'm just going around and hoping for the best. That is also what, what requires so much uh, practice and understanding these what these settings do and practice and understanding what, what everything does. When I go around, like this is the problem with making setups for a lot of people because it's difficult to feel the difference between if I go 3.9, then I'm going to have less grip in the front end but you also might have to adjust the dampers, but then you have to adjust the springs and then you might have to change the aero balance and then you have to change the caster and then you have to also correlate with the back end a little bit, you know? All of these things, I, for me, I can make seven of these different changes at once because I understand how I want to have the car, but it's really difficult to convey that for me, from me to you guys to explain how this can work. You know? <laughs> Uh, and that takes practice, basically. Uh, but it's also quite simple that if you have too much grip on the front end when you brake and the car just steers in, like, make this change and see if it works. Like, you're never ever going to be having an optimal setup. Black magic, but with science. Yes, and a little bit of feeling of what's going on. I make one change hoping it works, then forget what I changed how much, yes. And that is the thing that, that I will come to actually with versioning, that is very good. So dampers are very tricky, these are more, one of the most uh, difficult things to feel and, and have the, like, to master basically, you know. Lab notebooks, yeah, like, basically, you know. I have ended up with deleting a setup that I had to go back to because the change that I made uh, was bad. And then it's like, what did I do? What change did I make? You know. And then we come to arrow. Basically, more downforce means more better. You know. Apart from that, the car then goes slower. So there's a front arrow variation here. This tells you, this is a number on how much arrow you have on the front end versus the rear end. So if we increase the, the rear wing by one, we get a more negative value here. That means that the car, in this case, the left side of the car, which is the back end, that has more downforce, makes the car more understeer. But this is not the only balance value that we have to take care of. Because we have the mechanical grip. This is just how the arrow affects the car. And... If you want less, so you basically govern the amount of air. <laughs> Hello, Artex, for the <laughs> thank you for the follow. Hope you're doing all right. Um, <laughs> the, the sound when you're driving that takes over kind of kind of a bit. Uh, <laughs> right. So the overall downforce level we set with the rear wing. And also the rear wing, most people think that the rear wing does all of the downforce, but it, in reality, like not perhaps in the game, but in reality, it acts as a, it throws all the air up, which means that you create a low pressure so that the diffuser underneath the car back here produces more downforce. So a Formula One car rear wing is meant to produce a better situation for the diffuser. That is the main task of the rear wing, but it, more rear wing also produces more drag. You know, more rearing, uh, more drag, but more downforce. But we also changed the balance when we changed uh, the wing. So let's let's say we want more arrow around uh, um, Alton Park here. And that means that we roughly want to be in the same spot as we are here, if we are happy with the arrow balance. So let's say we go up to 5. That means that we now have 3.4. A lower ride height... This is rear and this is front. A lower ride height will produce more downforce on that side of the car. So as we went from 4 to 5, now we produce more. Uh, let's go the other way, actually, because it's easier because of the setup, how the setup is made. Let's say we want less arrow. We go to a, a 3 wing. Now we have to produce a little bit more arrow uh, downforce from the ride height to go to minus 2.7. 
and now so instead of having 73 millimeters of ride height we have 70 and that creates the same arrow balance as we had before but now the really the tricky part that most of you guys again won't notice unless there are big changes is that the point the balance of the mechanical grip and the balance of the arrow will not be the same point so if you make a really big adjustment like this and you have to you know do something like this or something to get to roughly 2.7 again this like the, the overall force will be somewhere else than the mechanical grip so the difference but if you if you if the arrow takes over or is too less in comparison to the mechanical grip the balance cannot actually be the same so it's more likely that it makes sense that we are somewhere around this if we have this amount of downforce but that needs to well don't go too far away from the aggressive preset but at monza you basically want to be at rear a zero rear wing but then it means that you might have to go really low on the rear end to create some kind of aerodynamic stability also don't have don't have a higher ride height on the front than the rear because then your uh, uh what's it called the rake is like this and then the car then it's an airplane you know so keep a higher uh, <laughs> rear end than the front end and the bentley really likes a tall like a high rear end because the angle i mean it's a long car you know then we go to le mans yeah exactly they call it flyway too long didn't read how get fast please okay thanks bye uh yeah guys so when i've told you how to make a setup then you can ask abrasive because he's the quick boy you know uh brake ducts how much cooling do we have on the brakes uh warmer uh, will have more brake ducts simple as that what you need to keep in mind if, is if you change this brakes will if the brakes get hotter you might have to go with a lower initial pressure on the rear like on the on the tires sorry now i've been ranting for a long time uh <laughs> these are all the different things that you can do temporary fuel i haven't messed with uh you can test like what happens with the with the air balance if you have fuel more fuel in Brake ducts create drag. I'm not sure it affects um, the vehicle model in this game too much, but in reality, yes, it would. I'm not sure ACC handles it very well or that you're going to notice the difference. Uh, I change the brake ducts way too little, basically. Make sure that your brakes, you can see the temperature of the brakes, make sure that they're not always in the green. Make sure they go a little bit blue and on the straights at least so you know that you're not going out of the uh the operating uh window which also then when we come back to, to to brakes again like this is gonna affect what like the brakes that you have are gonna be affected by that this is so tricky and i don't know everything about the game but i understand the mechanics behind it yeah because if it's fully open the warm air will leave the brake yes exactly so it's gonna cool the brakes very much and brakes need some heat in them to work when you made a setup change and you feel like yes i like this setup change make a new version so like version 6 or as king does it uh, he types more letters the the newer the setup is so more letters means more setup <laughs> did green talk about his toes already i did uh don't worry too much about it but the meta currently so what is best is basically this it's weird and it, i hate it but they're gonna change that and i'm not too sure about all the meta and everything like that but i, I talked about how the toe works yes all right so now we should do some some driving this has been uh this has been taking quite some time but now this can obviously go to to youtube and you can go back and listen to it in the vod after two weeks it's gonna go away and then hopefully i have it on youtube my naming scheme is perfect it, it is very very good actually full positive toe right no the opposite way full negative toe so which means that you have full two out, which is less grippy. This is going to explode on YouTube. No, I don't think so. It's way too long. <laughs> well, if you make it explode. So, guys, I have a YouTube channel. There are three videos and they're not about this at all. It was a kappa. Yes. <laughs> I know that uh, that's a kappa. Yeah. And make sure Green notices you before he comes to famous. Uh, yes. Right. Aha! It worked. Indeed um right so let's go out and drive and just 
talk about how I perceive this setup around Alton Park. So now you can see that all my pressures are 26.8 and as I said 27.6 is where we want to end up. Um, if you go too far away from the operating window, uh, the rule of thumb that I said that basically, you know, increasing increasing 0.1 psi will uh, be the same as uh, a 2 degree colder track, uh, that might not work. Also. If you are 1 psi too low, you might not actually have to increase it by 1 psi. It might only have to be 0.5 psi to get the temperature into the tire and then the, the tire will work better and produce more heat. So it's kind of not always linear. So this track is very tricky in terms of the curbs being very bumpy. You got yourself a sub. Oh nice, thank you. Uh, Let's hope I managed to actually put this video on there as well then. <laughs> you can also see me uh, hit a wall uh, at Bathurst because I'm a pro driver. Kappa, you know, everything. Um, okay, so this setup was made before the last um, update to the game, the new physics engine. Which means that it's going to be a little bit weird because the tire flex isn't wasn't implemented at that time and also overall with the old setups I've noticed that the front end grip isn't uh, too high like I, I need to get more front end grip so let's take a, a lap around this track a break where the line goes away from the tarmac kinda uh, these curbs are oh, that's a that's a bad description but these those curbs are jumpy here I break in the dip Try to take quite the round corner, carry the speed, don't go too wide, make sure you don't put a wheel on the grass, also that curb can set you up. Here you brake where the road comes in, just a little bit, try to keep as much speed as you can, orange marker on the left hand side, trail brake into the hairpin, just keep uh, a velocity, make sure you don't get too much of a oversteer on the, on the exit. Here brake on the right side, there's a marker in the grass basically, for the quickest way through that chicane you need to take the inside you need to basically go right across the curb on the inside left and then you just have to take it around there that takes a lot of practice here i just go around the apexes basically i don't cut the curb here i take a little bit on the curb on the inside the left curb here you have to avoid with the entire will to live that you have basically because it sends you to narnia otherwise breaking the dip Find the inside apex and let the car drift wide over the bump there and grip up on the outside and don't hit the grass. Brake at the marker basically, I brake too late. And then you just don't drift too wide here as I did there. And that's a lap. So a question, if my tires overheat and have too much PSI after 5 laps and my tire PSI are pretty low already, is there a big change that it is something different than the PSI? Basically, with the new tire model, it takes more time for the tires to heat up. But it could also be, for instance, that you should open your brake ducts a little bit. You got those CDA setups since two days. Uh, tried them, but are freaking oversteery and unstable for you. Uh, throwing away my money, lol. Yes, that is the thing with the CDA setups. They're made in a certain way that some people drive uh, kinda and a lot of aliens to be fair drive quickly with the CDA setups but they're kinda oversteery so for instance what one thing that you could do normally with the CDA setups to make them a little bit more reasonable is to just soften up the rear and the roll bar a little bit to make the to make the back end just sit down a little bit uh, perhaps take away 0.1 camber on the front end to limit the grip that you have on the front end and uh, yeah, and then it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna talk about in different corners what changes will work better or worse as well. Uh, but yeah, this is the this is the fun and tricky part with setups. There are so many things to do and to to adjust and polish, you know. Also, thank you, Walker, for for uh, linking that. As I said, there is a picture in. Uh, how do cars work, uh, which tells you how the 
which shows basically how the tire works when you have different loads on them. Cornering stiffness means grip. Stiffer springs make tires hotter, I think. Someone please correct me. Uh, yeah, it might. Basically, that might be true. Yes, uh, I should would say overall that that is true because you know when we say makes st things stiffer to overload the tires, overloading the tires is going to create a bunch of uh, heat because we slip the tires, you know, and we put a lot of energy, a lot of pressure on the tires. So yeah, uh, making this springs a little bit softer might help uh, overall a soft car is a grippier car but it's also less controlled it's less direct so with this setup what I feel for instance is that into corners I feel like I there's understeer I don't have so much grip into corners but out of corners and also when I go on the brakes like I do here the front end gets very grippy and I have a lot of rotation. Uh, so that means when, when I brake, I put like the tires, the front tires gain too much grip. So that means I would like to limit the amount of grip that my front tires get when I put force on them. That means that I might, might have to make a stiffer bump stop or uh, I might have to uh, increase the stiffness of the bump on the front dampers but since I also have a so we have abrasive and crank on the server as well uh, and I have some kind of fuel also when what fuel should you use when making setups I use 26 liters because I ended up using that and it's basically somewhere in between what you would need for quality but it's not far from the 20 minute races that I normally do then I would need 40 45 liters normally if you make, if you're doing a 24-hour race, you need long stints. Uh, try the setup for fuel, full fuel, and for low fuel. But make sure it's best for full fuel because it's easy to start on that, and then you can adjust how the car feels throughout the stint. You might hop on in like 20. Sure, nice. All right. So, some things that we have identified with this setup. Also, why. I like this car stops at times like that so we have identified that we get a little bit too much grip on the front end when we put force so vertical force on the front tires so for instance during braking or when we go off the the throttle we we get a little bit more weight on the front end and they grip up too much which means that we're gonna have to limit the amount of grip when we get that we get when we put vertical force on the front tires. But we also now here I have understeering. Now the pressures aren't ideal, and uh, that's gonna change a little bit. But the the amount of grip front to rear is kind of consistent here. The pressures are roughly the same. You can start to feel how the car feels, even though you don't even though you don't have optimal uh, pressures. Uh, but of course, to be pre very precise, you should wait until you have around 27.6 PSI before you start to judge the, the amount of grip too much. Also, shift before the R, like the rev limiter hits, you know, that is a good thing. So we have a little bit too little grip on the front end uh, in steady state cornering, so just like mid corner grip. But into the corners, when we brake and we lift off the throttle, we have a little bit too much grip. And out of the corners, we have a little bit of rotation. The, the car kind of gets stuck in the rotation and just continues to rotate. And that can be a few different things, or quite a lot of different things, but there you see. Um, and I also feel like I have like the, the front ends the front end doesn't really dig into the the track too much. I feel like the front end is a little bit skittish. Do you know the driver 61 schedule for setup and is it any good? Is it that table with like if you have too little or too much grip when you brake you should do this or like into corners and out of corners? Because if it is that, it is a good hint but uh, it doesn't tell you the entire truth because you know if you like how are you gonna change uh, it is that table yes okay so you know dampers 
when you change the dampers or like when you change the spring stiffness you have to change the dampers and when you change the anti-roll bar you might have to change the spring stiffness and when you change the anti-roll bar you might also have to change the, the camber you know everything is connected so it is kind of a good uh, start but it doesn't tell you the entire truth which is a problem and this is why I want to take a wider approach here and tell you guys how does different things correlate they saw that my I touched the curb a little bit and the front end is kind of stiff it jumped across the, the curb and off the track which is a tricky part with Alton with the curves being very sharp and jumpy so yeah that table is a good start and a kind of a good uh, memory kind of thing uh, but it is kind of it's a it's a very it's a very blunt tool if you see what I mean So here I don't feel like the front end is very connected with the road. Um, so basically what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go in to setup page and make a few setup changes and see how that works. Because in the end, even though you know everything what's going on, even though you know understand everything, you have to make trial and error and see how the car feels. Yes, that is a good conclusion, Corsa. So a fast bump, this. Oh, wait, that is something that I forgot to say before. This is very important. There is a rule of thumb when it comes to dampers. This is really, really important, just to understand how dampers work. You want the bump to be less than the rebound. So you want, uh, if you go over a bump, uh, you want the tire to go up into the wheel well, and it shouldn't come down too quickly. If you go into like a, a pothole, like the, then that means that the tire isn't gonna going to go down all the way and hit the bump, but it's gonna stay up a little bit. And then when it lands, the tire will also easily go up. So you want the bump to be less than the rebound, and you want the fast bump to be less than the fast rebound. But then you also want the fast uh, thing to be less than the normal speed one. So fast rebound is less than rebound, fast bump is less than bump, bump is less than rebound. So you see this kind of, this pattern. 14 is lower than 20, 12 is lower than 18, 18 is lower than 20, and 12 is lower than 14. And it's a good idea to keep them the same on, the, on both sides. You really want to cut those curves, huh, Corsars? Yes, because I cannot stop in time before them. Well, then you might want to break a little bit earlier. Oh, King, I saw what you sent. I have no idea what that is, but yeah, sure, go ahead, post it. Um, I might have to try that out. Interesting. All right. Uh, so now we want to make some setup changes. And what I'm going to do is that since the, the latest patch uh, means that excessive camber... Uh, means issues. I'm gonna go down to 3.8 on the front end. But I'm also gonna actually lower the rear end by the same amount to try and keep the balance a little bit. That is an interesting tool that someone has made. Um, you tell it what you want to do and it tells you what you can do to make the setup better. Um, so caster, again, gonna increase um, the torque that you have in, in your steering wheel, which means that you, I think at least, gives you a better steering feel. But it also gives you a little bit more kind of dynamic camber. When you steer, you get more camber because the, the steering axis tilts further back and you lean the tires more than you steer. But obviously it's far from like 45 degrees where the change point is kind of. So uh, a little bit higher caster for me. Um, I'm gonna keep the toe settings for now. Uh, To, to do i'm gonna also gonna change the um, brake bias to, to 62 which will help me trail brake a little bit better because i feel like uh with the bentley if it gives you more control into the corners it means that you get a better but and also more consistent rotation through the corners with the lower brake bias so this means 
uh, more brake on the rear end, a lower. So this is how much you brake on the front end. Lesser here means more brake on the rear. And it's going to help you with rotating uh, and also not overloading the front tires a little bit. And then you change the car, then you change car, and you can start all over again. That's why we're always in the Bentley because the Bentley is the best car. Everyone knows that, you know. And I only have to make setups for for the Bentley on all the tracks, and then I'm fine, you know. Uh, another thing that we can see is that the wheel rate is very high on the front end in comparison to the rear end. At least that, that's what I think. Th this is like four clicks of a difference, and that feels that means that the front end feels a little bit skittish, and that's what I was saying as well. Like the 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 front end doesn't bite into the ground nicely, uh, since. The front end is heavier on this car. It's a front engine. It's basically mid engine, but the, the engine is further forward than, than here at least. It means that we want a little bit stiffer springs on the front end than we have on the rear, but I'm going to go up with the springs on the, on the rear end. And since we now have a stiffer spring, it means that the, the rear end is going to carry the weight a little bit better. This is very complex to understand, I think. Should I ban abrasive? <laughs> Bentley was the best car. No, Abrasive was the best driver. I don't know. Yeah. Should I ban Abrasive? Uh, don't do that. Not yet. <laughs> we can talk about that. Uh, it might not be the best car. It's the best feeling car now, I think. Uh, now we have a, when we have a higher wheel rate, it means that the rear end is going to carry the weight a little bit better, which means that we also won't get stuck in this like out of the corner rotations, like the back end just sits down and doesn't do anything really nicely. Um, so we've increased the wheel rate on the rear end. But I've always been a bitch, used to Bentley when it was good and switched when it wasn't. Uh, yeah, but that is also, I, I know that you uh, you really like to win. <laughs> uh, you know. So that is the spring rate stiffness thing that we have uh, that we've changed now. I'm also gonna up the differential a little bit, just because. Um, and then we had this... Uh, Yes, let's go down a little bit on the fast bump to make sure we go can take the curbs a little bit better. But we're also gonna... How are we gonna do this? Yeah, I'm actually gonna go up a little bit on the normal bump. So that means that the, the curve will basically look... The damper curve will look instead of like... We increase that, but we decrease the stiffness here. So it's gonna be more of a, a knee in essence. It's not even a car, it identifies as a cruise ship. I like to cruise, you know. What are these words of yours? Uh, what do you mean? Still getting used to this modding thing, yeah. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do is also, I'm gonna come down a little bit on the rebound on the rear end to, while we brake, get the, the rear tires to sit down on the, on the tarmac a little bit faster. Especially this rebound, the fast rebound here. Uh, 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 and I probably want to. There, there's no real straights here, you know. So we want a lot of downforce, but since we made that change, uh, we can't go too low on the ride height on the front end as well because then it's gonna hit the the, uh, the curbs, which is gonna be a problem. Nah, let's keep the rear wing on the same level. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna make a new setup because if I would change the V5, then I would ruin that setup, you know? So, V6. Uh, lower numbers means that they're less stiff. So, you know... Uh, Gecko, I think that you would understand the derivative and, and how the force reacts, basically. So the derivative of the of the size, so like the, the the velocity it compresses or decompresses, uh, it produces more force if it's stiffer. So a higher number would mean that it's very difficult to compress a damper quick. Compressing a damper slowly is always very easy. I know abrasive. That's the problem when people talk about the, the balancing of performance. Uh, that thing shows up and people are like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know. <laughs> All the time. Right. Um, so, caster is going to help us turn in a little bit better. Uh, the overall grip. 
I have adjusted the camera. I've taken it down by 0.2 on front and rear. So balance should be roughly the same. Uh, I've changed the spring rates a little bit and also the preload differential. Just upped it a little bit. And I have adjusted the damper slightly. And also the arrow to be fair. Let's try that and see how it feels. Like non-Newtonian -Newton fluids. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. So, I cannot break into the 33. Oh, what a shame. Uh, so, non-Newtonian -Newton fluids. Uh, that means that they react differently at different, comp like, force... Um, Velocities, kind of like how quickly they're they're put under uh, force. So, ketchup, for instance, the f the higher speed it has, the softer it get, like the 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 less viscous it gets. Uh, what's that called? The corn starch thingy uh, that gets harder the faster you compress it. So, out on that corner, we had a little bit too much rotation going through the corner. But apart from that, this feels more put together. Uh, the car feels more coherent front to rear. And that's going to be big part. That's a lot of over there. Mm. Uh, that's going to be a lot due to the spring rates being more similar front to rear. Spring rates can be very different front to rear. But then it has to be because it needs to be that way. And for the Bentley, they, they should be quite similar front to rear. So now we seem to have more of a, just a clean, too much, um, too much grip on the front end in comparison to the rear end. Ublek, indeed. That exactly. That's exactly what I was uh, thinking of. Still into the corner there. I had a little bit, un a little bit too much understeer and oversteer out of the corner. And that curb is going to do that if you hit that. Exactly, cross us. So, Ubelek would basically be a good explanation to how a damper works. It's just that a damper is very linear, so it isn't really a non-Newtonian fluid. Uh, because a, a, new, a Newtonian fluid just means that it produces more force the faster you compress it, which means that is just normal, you know? More, more force means more force, kinda. So I'm still not really having issues with the rear grip out of the slow corners, which, me which means that I could probably go up a little bit more on the preload of the diff, just getting it, getting it a little bit more agile. And obviously how, how you make your setup is going to be very dependent on how you drive your car. What type of car you drive? and how you like to have the car. Some people want to have it quite understeered, so you need to steer more to get around the corner. Some people, like Abrasive for instance, wants the car to rotate quite a lot and you just manage the oversteer. Uh, and I kind of enjoy that a little bit. Um, the Bentley is kind of oversteered on brakes, which uh, helps when doing that because you can control the back end coming around. There, the front end got stuck on the curb. Uh, which is going to happen regardless, uh, to some extent. But the Bentley is kind of nice because you can balance it quite nicely. But if you have the car set up incorrectly, so you have too much grip on the front end, if you slide wider, you're going to gain more and more grip the wider you slide. Because now you're taking a corner more and more with the front end, you know. So I want it to be kind of... I want the front end to not gain too much but the rear end to slide a little bit. That could be a, could be a thing, Walker. I was thinking of that as well a little bit. Um, I think I'm just going to make some small adjustments in the end. Uh, here, a little bit more. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Because it could be good to now then take up some well, questions and like discussion points.
Yeah, so what you're discussing there, cutting the first curve into the first chicane there. Yes, you can cut it. Like, you should cut it to be to be quick. And it makes a lot of a difference. It's just that it's gonna... There's a phenomenon. If you hit a curb hard, it's gonna knock pressures out of your tires. Okay, so I think there's only small damper adjustments left to go. Uh, and basically... Now I want a little bit more grip going into the corners and obviously so rebound can mean when the when the car sits back if you accelerate the front wheel should come down to the ground but it can also mean that when you steer into a corner that the inside tire comes down to the ground. So you know we have front to rear but also side to side. So when you go front to rear these tires are going to do the same thing. And these tires are going to do the same thing. When you steer into a corner, these tires are going to do the same thing. And these tires are going to do the same thing. Which makes it complex. Um, so out of the corners, uh, we want, we probably want the rear tires to, rear dampers to be quite soft in compression. A little bit less like that. Uh, but we can probably also go up a little bit on the anti-roll bar to make sure it's just a little bit more controlled out of the corners, the front end, so it doesn't grip too much. But now, we, since we increased the anti-roll bar, we need probably to compensate a little bit for the mechanical grip. So I'm going to take away some grip in terms of camber. That's also actually going to make us a little bit, the, the tires sit down a little bit on the tarmac a little bit better when accelerating, giving us more grip longitudinally. So having less gr grip sideways can actually make you have more grip sideways in this relation, which is very weird. But that is just how things work together. I'm going to try this. <clears throat> exactly. Different tracks require different setups, and there's no not one setup to rule them all. Exactly. Uh, some tracks have kind of the same layout. Uh, not, not the same layout as they look the same, but like the same characteristics. Uh, for instance, uh, a Nürburgring setup is going to work quite right for some other tracks, uh, which I found uh, recently. And a Silverstone setup are, is going to make quite a good setup for some other tracks. So, there I have way too little grip through the corner on the front end, and that's going to be the anti roll bar limiting the grip we have. Also, the anti-roll bar is going to make it less ideal to, you know, when, when the inside tire goes up, because we hit a curb, uh, the anti-roll bar is going to transfer that to, to jank the outside tire up, and that's just because how the, the anti-roll bar is designed. So anti-roll bars make you, well, will make, make it worse to take curbs as well, uh, unfortunately. Quite a, quite a controlled overstay through that long sweeping corner. <laughs> well, thank you, Sabrex. Um, we'll see. Uh, but it would be interesting... Okay, so if you have any questions that you want to type to me uh, that needs some time in some ways, you can do it on Discord, uh, on my Discord. There's not a lot of people there, but it's an easy way to get to me. Uh, and there's that one text channel called How Do Cars Work? I think that might be a good point to, to try. In Setup Drop, I drop my setups normally if I remember to do it. And that's where I'm going to drop setups if you ask for them. Unless I send it directly to you. But you, there's also a channel for requesting setups or setup help if you need that. And that's obviously if I have the time to, to work on it. Why so many Porsches? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I guess people like the Porsche. 
can be an interesting car around here. Uh, the Porsche is a car that basically always need an input, uh, throttle or brake, and around here you're basically doing that all the time. Is Porsche now equal to the BMW? The Porsche is normally quite quick, and also, guys, I'm, I haven't been talking about what car is the best currently and so on so much, uh, because the physics here, uh, well, they're gonna change a little bit in terms of if you have a front front engine car or a rear rear engine car and what type of car it is, how it feels and so on. If it's a large or a light car, but uh, what car is fastest at the time? It's always gonna change uh, because of new updates to the game. So it doesn't make too much sense to talk about that. That is something that you have to figure out yourself. And there's also the point that. I, some cars are faster than some others, but if you drive a certain way, uh, you're, like, you might be faster in a car that is not theoretically faster than another car, you see, if it, if, if it fits better. So, a little bit too much grip on the front end there. That's what I plan on using, so there'll be at least one more. <laughs> nice. Yes, racing is the command for Finnish Discord. You're committing to the BMW long-term power. Nice. Hopefully it stays roughly competitive. So, given that I have... Well, the front end feels a little bit... Well, that was the wrong gear for that corner. Uh, now it feels like I have a lit little bit too little grip uh, mid-corner uh, on the front end which is going to be very much due to the increase in anti-roll bar stiffness but i also feel like when i get the slide the front end gains a little bit too much so it might be that i have to go down on the anti-roll bar stiffness again but then take away some front camber perhaps you're going with the honda for for this race at least uh, yeah, you guys are all too fast, damn it. Uh, the, well, basically, it's me and the quick boys on the server currently. Uh, Diaz, or Abrasive, is really quick. Cranko is very fast as well. King is maybe not Abrasive speed, but he's definitely faster than me normally, depending on what track we're on. Not when you manage to get those curves, as if I ever will. I think you will. Uh, not if you tie, like try to read chat while driving. Because that doesn't help. Also, guys, something that is very important. If you uh, if you slide off, like if you have an accident, hold your brakes. Because it means that no matter how you spin, if you lock up the wheels, you're going to go in a straight line somewhere. Not go around like this. Because that is what happens if you don't lock your brakes. The car is going to... You, you're gonna get some grip and it's gonna go somewhere or like it's gonna go some other way and it's really difficult to understand where you're going lock your brakes and Continue just in the tan tangent to the car But my tires yes, but if you spin if you have an accident you've already messed your tires Think about the tires. Yes, but if you can catch it like fine, you know But if you're going into like if, if there's a big crash you just hold your tires because you're likely gonna be hit by 14 different people anyway and gonna have to come back to repairs uh, for repairs and then tires isn't your problem anymore <laughs> Lord Abrasive press your brakes. Yes abrasive goddammit I would be more worried about suspension. Yeah, exactly uh, <laughs> So let's go back down on the entral bar and let's take away a little bit more on the camber on the front end uh, but what we're also going to do is that I'm going to take out a little bit of the bump stop rate. This works a little bit like the anti roll bar, but more on the single tires, kind of. And I can probably go up a little bit more on the preload, as I said. So now we're on V7, and I'm not pleased with how the V7 was. So I'm going to make a new V7. I'm just going to overwrite that, because otherwise, if I have to go back to where I was before, I might as well just go back to, to V6, you know. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to load that up. And I'm going to go into Discord and talk to King and Abrasive.